Well, it's time for the business news now. After a six-week strike, the US largest auto sector and Ford have suddenly reached a tentative agreement on a new contract. Charles Pelgrin is here. What's going on? That's right, Gavin. The United Auto Workers uh, Union and the US car maker Ford have agreed to terms on a new four-year contract. Uh, the a deal needs to be ratified by the UAW's National Council on Sunday and then by Ford's 57,000 uh, union workers before uh, being finalized. Uh, the tentative uh, deal would raise uh, wages of union members 25 percent over the next four years and would include add-ons as well. Eliza Kamenov has all the details. It's a historic day for these Ford workers. Outside the automaker's Michigan assembly plant, they stand ecstatic and emotional after a deal was struck between their union and employer. This is my first strike, but I put in a lot of time and effort with, the, with Ford, so I'm just really excited that it's going to work out for everybody. Ford is one of the U.S.'s big three automakers who have been targeted by the United Auto Workers strike since mid-September after failing to reach a contract agreement for the next four years. The new deal not only comes with an immediate 11% wage increase for all union members, but will give workers a 25% increase by the end of the contract. It also includes an additional cost of living raise, which will raise that rate to over 30 percent. This means top wage earners will reach $40 per hour. But it has yet to be approved by 57,000 union members at the company and only concerns Ford for now. Union leaders are hopeful that having Ford go back to full working capacity will force its competitors to also strike a deal as soon as possible. We're going back to work at Ford to keep the pressure on Stellantis and GM. The last thing they want is for Ford to get back to full capacity while they mess around and lag behind. The union's national council for Ford will vote on Sunday on whether to send the agreement to the membership for approval. Meanwhile in California, thousands of hotel workers took to the streets of downtown Los Angeles protesting for higher wages and better working conditions. The group behind the movement, Unite Here Local 11, represents some 15,000 workers employed in, in about 60 major hotels in the area. Uh, members include cooks, room attendants, dishwashers, among others. Over the last several months, some uh, hotels have reached tentative agreements with the union. We, we, hope, we hope they empathize with us. This is us trying to fight for a living wage to live in Los Angeles. It's getting really, really expensive to live here. Um, we just, we're fighting for pension, we're fighting for health care, we're fighting for the American dream. Everything that we were promised to work hard, pay your taxes, and be a good citizen. We just want, we just, we just, we just want our contract to be, to be uh, reciprocated. We want to be treated like a human being and treated fairly. And a similar march organized on the Las Vegas Strip led to dozens of arrests of protesters blocking traffic. The labor action aimed at drawing attention to negotiations with three major casino companies. Slowing, uh, staying in the U.S. with a look at Meta's earnings report for the third quarter, the company behind the, such uh, social networks as Facebook and Instagram, beating expectations, its revenue rising 23% uh, to over $34 billion, while net profits rose 164% year-on-year to just over $11 billion. This was due to strong ad sales, which represent 98.5% of Meta's revenue. The company credited its use of artificial intelligence to help advertisers better find their audiences. This also follows Meta's intense cost-cutting drive over the last year or so, which saw its workforce ranks reduced by 23%. The company, uh, to sum up, also has over 2 billion daily active users. Here in Europe, investors will be awaiting the European Central Bank's next decision on interest rates, uh, which is due this uh, Thursday afternoon. The expectation is that the ECB will pause its rates increases. Speaking on Wednesday, its president, Christine Lagarde, said the battle to tame inflation isn't over, and she's confident the rate in price increases can be brought down to the target 2%. Risks such as a potential upswing in oil prices due to the conflict in the Middle East need to be monitored. Well, let's have a look uh, at the markets now. Uh, shares in Europe uh, at the open uh, trading lower ahead of that rate, rate decision uh, expected in Europe. We got the FTSE in London down over a uh, half a percent lower. Paris got down over 1% lower. 
and in Asia, we're seeing a sell-off on the major uh, marketplaces there, except uh, for the Shanghai Composite uh, trading up uh, a half a percent higher. Uh, the Kospi in Seoul closing uh, over two and a half percent lower. Uh, local chip supplier SK, SK Hynix posting a $1.61 billion net loss for the third quarter. And finally, the strategy behind the Barbie movie has paid off for toy maker Mattel. The company has managed to reverse its slump in toy sales. Barbie sales uh, specifically, specifically have increased 16% over the last quarter. Um, that wasn't enough uh, to revise, though, the company's end of year. Uh, forecast, especially for the Christmas season, uh, revising that forecast upwards, uh, reflecting worries about uh, economic challenges affecting uh, consumer spending. And that's why, Gavin, uh, investing in TV and films is seen uh, as a way for Mattel uh, to diversify revenue streams. So sorry to bring it back to brass tacks and to dollar, but it was a fun movie. Have you invested in Barbie dolls? I wish I invested in anything. <laughs> okay, time will tell. Uh, Shell Pell Grand on the business desk, thank you.